What's going on, you wild ghouls? It's your two favorite hostess with the most is back here for 31 Days of Horror tonight. We're going to be diving into a classic horror film from the early 80s, 1982's Poltergeist, directed by the man, the myth, the legend, Toby Hooper, produced and co-written by Steven Spielberg. Poltergeist. It knows what scares you. And man, this is a great film and a nostalgic movie I grew up on. And I know a lot of you out there probably grew up on, up on this film as well, like Henry. I uh, just growing up in this movie and it's fun to revisit this, you know, all these years later and talk about it during the Halloween season. This is definitely a horror classic, one that uh, I call back watching from my childhood. Watching it as a little kid, it terrified the hell out of me. <laughs> watching it back in the early 90s, you know, uh, not yet a teenager, just a kid. You know, you're finally staying up late. Staying with your friends, it's a movie that you threw in to watch and get really creeped out. Um, this movie especially is uh, notable for the scenes with the TV and the little girl and her saying, they're here. And you're just like, what the hell is happening? First, the ghosts that communicate with this little girl are, you know, they're kind of playful. But as the movie goes on, it turns more and more evil and all this evil things start happening. And uh, it's all about this family, the Freelings. They move into this nice uh, California neighborhood, into this new house, which they do not know is built on an ancient burial ground. Oh, and they didn't know that wasn't in the mortgage and everything when they signed the papers. <laughs> no. so like, by the way, this is haunted by poltergeists and demons. <laughs> so good luck, y'all. Uh, I mean, legally, yeah. I don't think you could do that, but um, it's a fun <laughs> movie. You know, I thought it was very unique and original, especially for 1982. You didn't see as many ghost stories about a family in the suburbs of, you know, in California, out in the, out in the hills, you know, a bunch of weird stuff. It looks like a brand new development but they later find out that it was they moved the gravestones but did not move the bodies which sets up a lot of great practical effects and real life skeletons they threw into this movie um but uh it's a really cool setup i i, I like how they went about this in the suburban family and things go bad really quickly in the film uh setting up a lot of really spooky scenes you know people out there that don't know what poltergeists are or spirits or entities that move things and sometimes harm you touch you you know, stuff like that. So they really dive into that. And it really has an Amblin touch to it. Like it's, it's spooky, but it, it there isn't a lot of, you know, comedy and jokes and then the family feels in the movie as well. So it doesn't really terrify you throughout the entire film. And it has that Spielberg touch to it. It definitely does feel like an Amblin film from Steven Spielberg. And I was reading some behind the scenes uh, information about the movie to get ready for this video. Um, apparently at the time, um, Steven Spielberg was contractually, uh, obligated to E.T. the extraterrestrial, therefore he couldn't come direct this film. So him and uh, Toby Hooper, he kind of uh, brought in Toby Hooper to direct this film. Um, there's a lot of stories on set. Uh, some cast members said that, you know, they, they didn't see Toby Hooper a lot, that uh, they thought that Steven Spielberg was more at the helm, they felt. But then others, um, as the years have gone by, have said, no, Steven Spielberg was there and did obviously contribute to the production, but this was Toby Hooper's film. So they were working closely together no matter what. You can definitely, uh, you know, feel Steven Spielberg's uh, writing throughout the film. He wrote the film, worked with Toby Hooper. Another fun fact that I read about the film, they tried to also uh, involve Stephen King to help with the writing. Unfortunately, he was busy at the time, so he couldn't have came on. But you can just imagine uh, some of the, the creepy things that he would have brought. And of course, with the scene with the clown under the bed, yes. there's obviously nods to Stephen King throughout the film. Uh, but uh, yeah, just some very creepy scenes and uh, these these really evil spirits that come and mess with this family and uh, uh, specifically this little girl uh, played by Heather O'Rourke. Uh, she played Carol Ann in the film. Then we have Craig T. Nelson, who uh, me and Logan know as Coach Coach <laughs> from back on the sitcom back in the 90s. Yep. And then you had his wife, uh, Diane, played by Joe Beth Williams. Uh, you also mentioned uh, about those skeletons. Well, apparently during the filming um, at that time, the fake skeletons were more expensive or so the urban legend goes, were more expensive. So uh, Steven Spielberg just had some real skeletons on set, which leads to um, a little chat we should have about the poltergeist curse. Yep. Um, there's a notable curse associated with the film uh, where a lot of cast members 
over the years have died, not necessarily on the first film, but uh, obviously Heather O'Rourke that played the little girl in the film that uh, communicates with the evil spirits and gets sucked through the TV and, um, you know, has all that terrifying stuff happen. She ended up uh, having these issues going on. They misdiagnosed her and eventually she passed away at a very young age, I think after the third film. Yeah, during um, the and then, third film and like part part of the movie's not even her. It's like a, a, a body double, essentially. You only see the back of her right. head. You can tell it's not her. So I, I think it was during the third film, but yeah, she was really young. Yeah, other people passed away too. Dominique Dunn that plays Dana in the film, the older sister, she died after she this She got movie. murdered. Yeah. Her, yeah, her boyfriend like dragged her out and like strangled her and she was like brain dead and she died like five days later. And that this is in 1982 when this movie came out too. So she did this film and she was gone. Yeah. Just a lot of weird shit. A lot of stuff happened, like cast uh, people in the movie and then people working on the film behind the scenes. Like it's a known curse in Hollywood and a lot of weird shit happened during the filming of this. So maybe it's symbolic as to what the movie's about coming to, you know, into real life and affecting people that were attached to this movie. This film feels very uh, real. You know, you can imagine, um, you've heard stories of, you know, people's houses being built and they didn't know that it was on, yes. you know, places where people have been buried, Native Americans um, and just weird things happen. And I've had some experiences, you've had some experiences with this as well, you know, whether directly or people we've known. Um, so this, you know, this movie is very, it feels very real, it feels like something that could happen. Uh, you know, obviously it's exaggerated in the film, but uh, it just lends to the overall uh, creepiness of Poltergeist. Also, it's worth mentioning that uh, Zelda, uh, Zelda Rubenstein plays uh, Tangina Barons in the film. She plays an exorcist. She has a lot of great scenes towards the end. She helps get, uh, get the family away from this uh, evil poltergeist that's affecting the family. Yep. Um, by the end of the film, you think everything's okay, but of course we get, we've seen multiple sequels since. We've even seen a recent uh, remake with Sam Rockwell a couple of years back, which wasn't as good, unfortunately. Um, and there were also talks about the Russo brothers doing another uh, redo of the film, uh, but that kind of fell apart. So I'm sure we'll see more of the Poltergeist universe, uh, but this first film, it sure is a horror classic, you know, going back and looking on it now, the effects, you know, look pretty spotty. It's the early 80s, the effects <laughs> yeah. weren't there, but you can imagine if Steven Spielberg had, you know, today's technology, all the CGI, all the practical effects that he would have used, you know, you can just imagine if a young Steven Spielberg was coming up today, just what the film could have looked like. But uh, just putting it into the context of when it was filmed anyway, it was done very well. The score is very well done. Everything feels very Amblin, like you mentioned. And Toby Hooper, it looked like he had a blast making the film, uh, directing these actors. Everybody did a good job. You know, you, when you have a, a, a child actor, you, know, you never really know what you're going to get. You know, they might not be as good. But Heather O'Rourke did a really good job, especially considering her age. And uh, she really she really sold it that she was communicating with that staticky TV and being pulled into uh, another realm. Yeah, one of the creepiest kids in horror movies of all time. Her and Gage from Pet Cemetery are up there the creepiest. So like she turns <laughs> like all innocent. They're here, and then that scene with Dominique as well outside the house. What's happening? Yeah. Like flipping out. There's so many iconic scenes in this movie. Uh, the scene, you know, uh, when I was a kid watching this, the clown scene in the bed, um, some of the scenes where you actually see the the ghosts, uh, but, you know, watching it now, the CGI doesn't hold up. <laughs> the but tree lot, coming through the window. <laughs> the tree, exactly, out yeah. in the back, you know, the skulls coming out of the ground and shit. And I mean, it was, yeah. you know, it's really eerie as a kid and watching it, it still kind of gets to you. Um, but, you know, they went about this a more lighthearted approach. This movie's only PG. Back then it was PG and R. There's no like PG-13. So family friendly, you can watch with your kids and, and younger audience. This may be a good introduction film into horror because it's not, you don't have as much gore and blood in this movie. There's a few like scenes with it, but that's about it. So I think, you know, younger generation, if they're looking to get into horror flicks, definitely check this out. But I had a blast of Poltergeist, a movie I watch every Halloween season. It never gets old to me. I love Toby Hooper, Spielberg working together. Really had a great atmosphere, good story. And uh, I love the cast in this movie. So many I iconic scenes. Love the score. And just all across the board, a really great film that holds up all these years later. So that being said, I'll give Toby Hooper's Poltergeist a four out of five. Ghoul hair pieces. I agree with everything that you said. This is definitely a horror classic. Uh, Toby Hooper and Steven Spielberg working together. They produced this film back in the early 80s that really, uh, you know, holds up today. 
uh, you know, some of the effects don't, but the story does and the very, the overall creepiness, this is a film that you're going to want to watch, you know, around Halloween season, a good scary movie to introduce to, uh, you know, your, your kids as they, you know, they're growing up and going into horror. This is a good one. Like you mentioned uh, great cast. Uh, everybody acted very, very well. We saw um, James Karen there. He played the, de- the real estate developer, um, James Karen's the same actor from uh, Return of the Living Dead, which we will also cover during these 31 days of horror from Return of the Living Dead. He played a character in there. Um, and it was just funny. He was like talking about how, you know, why didn't Craig T. Nelson and him were talking about um, why he didn't discuss, disclose this information that, that all these graves had been moved and, and they were right next to the subdivision. And he's like, it's not like something you'd advertise on the flyer, you know, <laughs> yeah. sleazy. So they, they kept That's all this cool, information. That's cool. Cause I'm going to sue you right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Something like that wouldn't fly today. There'd be a lot of litigation. <laughs> and it's yeah. funny. Cause at the end of the movie, the family, you know, they're not even thinking about anything. They just want to get the hell out of there and they go to the hotel at the end of the night and just, when they get to the hotel room, they just throw out the TV and that's the, that's the last scene you see in the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, this one's a great movie. I enjoy it very much. I am going to give Toby Hooper and Steven Spielberg's Poltergeist from 1982, a four out of five Carol Ann hair pieces. They're here. So that didn't scare you. Check out our YouTube channel. We've got a bunch of spooky videos coming out in the month of October for 31 Days of Horror. Also check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our website, cinefellas.com. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe below. This has been another Cinefellas 31 Days of Horror review. We enjoyed talking about 1982's Poltergeist with all of you. Do you guys enjoy this film as much as we do? Is this a movie that you watch every Halloween season? What do you think? think about all the behind the scenes curse stuff do you think steven spielberg really had real skeletons on set and if he did man that's wild only steven (laughs) spielberg would do something like that until the next 31 days of horror review i'm henry hill that's my good mate logan myers that's me until next time stay spooked my friends and cheese